I'm king of the world, and you all have to do whatever I say. <laughs> my apologies. I forgot I took my VR headset off. Ha, 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 ha. I'm a pretty big nerd, and I absolutely love video games. I've spent quite a lot of time in my life playing them, lately with my new VR headset. Ever since I received my GameCube as a present from my mother, when I was just seven years old, I've grown to adore video games and technology. I would spend hours diving into the world of gaming, and absolutely nothing could capture my interest in the same way. However, as I grew older, I needed more than to be entertained. I needed an escape. As I entered middle school, my parents' relationship began to fall apart. I would constantly hear my father yelling, cursing, and abusing my mother. I would lie awake at night, trying to fall asleep to the sound of my own parents' divorce. I started performing poorly in school, stopped caring about everything and everyone, became depressed, trapped in my own life. Throughout this time, the one and only way for me to even briefly forget about my situation was to pick up a controller and enter the virtual world. Driving sports cars, climbing up buildings, exploring ancient ruins, the possibilities of how I could spend a Saturday afternoon were truly infinite. I would become the driver, assassin, archaeologist, an NFL player I controlled, and felt submerged in a world I could truly tailor to my liking. I later then got my first job, saved up money, and bought more advanced, up-to-date video game consoles simply to play better video games and spend my time in a world that I could control and call my own. As I grew older, I learned to code, a skill I used to even further alter and control the virtual worlds I'd essentially grown to spend my life inside. I continued to improve my coding skills throughout my senior year of high school, leading up to the day of my realization. I was walking into a newly opened electronics store and saw an Oculus, a high-end virtual reality device far too expensive or advanced at the time for a kid like myself to ever even hope to use, let alone possess. However, that day, I was able to give it a try. I was truly immersed into another world, unlike anything I'd ever experienced, and firsthand witnessed the power of virtual reality. From that moment, I began to foresee just how incredible this developing technology was. I could only imagine what it would evolve into. I wanted to watch virtual reality impact the world, and specifically impact those that longed to be teleported into their own world, like myself. Since that day, technology has only continued to advance faster and faster. In 2015, Samsung launched its own VR headset. And as of January this year, they've sold over 5 million units. Virtual reality has officially broken into the mainstream. It is glaringly apparent how widespread the desire to enter a virtual world is, a desire that only continues to increase. However, to many people, it is still unclear what exactly virtual reality is and just how much it is capable of. To paint a better picture of what this looks like, I'm going to tell you all about hypothetical Helga. Helga is not a huge fan of technology by any means. She has worked at the same job for quite a long time and only recently found out about the internet. As far as she is concerned, virtual reality is just something out of a sci-fi movie that might potentially maybe have like a small chance of existing like 50 years from now. Now let's try to visualize her colleague, hypothetical Hart. Hart thinks she has a pretty good understanding of technology owns an iPhone, and even teaches a class about computers. Her overweight cousin who lives in his mom's basement once mentioned VR to her, and she is now under the impression it is a technology exclusively for people that love World of Warcraft more than life itself. Hart dismisses VR completely and assumes it's nothing more than a sweaty overpriced helmet. Both Helga and Hart could not be more wrong. Any one of the well over 5 million people that now possess this technology 
would be able to tell them VR is very real and is certainly much more than a sweaty overpriced helmet. However, for many people as well as heart, the only use case imaginable for virtual reality is inside the video game industry. In all fairness, the technology is perfect for it. The goal of video games is to submerge you in a virtual environment, providing an immersive and enjoyable experience for the user. Throughout the years, game consoles have continued to advance, working to accomplish this task. Virtual reality could bring this to an entire new level, and has already done so, offering dozens of games already available to play. However, as I've said before, and will say again and again and again, the power of this technology reaches so far beyond just video games. Today, right now, as I'm speaking to all of you, Virtual reality is being used in the treatment of burn victims, transporting them into a snow world to help them cope with the pain they are facing before surgery. Patients can actually build a snowman inside of their hospital room. Interestingly enough, VR's place in hospitals isn't only for patients either. Many cutting edge medical schools use virtual reality as a learning tool, a tool that can educate, provide hands-on experience, and create doctors more advanced and talented than ever before. Learning by doing is arguably the most effective method of training. Unfortunately, in some situations, certain activities such as performing open heart surgery are too expensive or too dangerous to repeatedly practice in real life. Some others might include flying a plane, enacting military combat maneuvers, you all get the idea. The point I'm trying to make here is pilots use virtual reality. Soldiers use virtual reality. Doctors use virtual reality. And I use virtual reality. This technology is capable of so much more than people realize. And it's just waiting to be applied and utilized in every field imaginable. But even looking at today's current uses of virtual reality, there's truly no way to predict where this is all headed. Imagine, several years from now, when more sophisticated virtual reality consoles exist, ones that were capable of connecting to a user's nervous system. Virtual reality could provide the physically disabled with an outlet, a way to experience that which able-bodied persons take for granted. A blind person putting on a VR headset connecting to their nervous system, and being able to see the virtual world around them. Being able to see for the very first time in their lives. Someone who was paralyzed in a horrible accident, feeling the wind against their face as they run through the virtual world. A sensation they've grown to miss more than anything. When my mother walked into Walmart and bought me that GameCube more than 10 years ago, there was no way for her to possibly foresee or understand that what she purchased that day was so much more than just a video game console. She gave me the ability to enter a virtual world, the ability to even briefly forget about the things I wished I could change but was not able to, and gifted me a world of my own to control. The gift she gave me that day completely changed my life. Each and every one of us has something going on in our lives that we wish we could change, but are not able to. We all have our own individual challenges, obstacles, roadblocks, and things that keep us lying awake in bed at night. In addition, as human beings, we search for a way to escape all of these. For me, I found that escape inside video games inside the virtual world. People who don't play video games often wonder what it is that makes them so engaging to others. The truth is, the real world can be unpredictable, evil, chaotic, and messy. There always has been and always will be things in our lives we want to completely control but can't. Our futures, health, relationships, money, jobs, the list goes on and on. Video games are clear. If you do something in a certain way, 
you get a certain result. Sadly, that's not how life works. Sometimes you do everything right, but everything goes wrong. Sometimes it is easier to escape to a world where life is predictable, organized, and under our control, and in ways that can be healthy and unhealthy. Video games provide this escape, unlike anything else, a true escape to another world. People have always wanted to master their environment since the dawn of time, to live in a world in which they control. We wanted our hands to be able to do more. That's why we have hammers. We work hard to be successful, make money, and fulfill our desires, goals, and ambitions. Essentially, we envision a world tailored to our liking. The possibility is nearly here for us to make a choice, a choice that prior to this technology never existed. The choice between living in the real world, following its rules, accepting the pain and struggles we deal with on a daily basis, and coming to terms with the fact that there are things we cannot change, do, or experience, and attempt to embrace these limitations. Or live in a virtual world without any restrictions, a world so lifelike and convincing you cannot even determine its authenticity. Which one will each person choose? As I've continued to mature and the struggles and pain I once faced reside, I look back on when my parents got divorced and how I handled it. After quite a lot of thought, I'm still unsure if I should have handled the situation the way I did. I question if I should have used the virtual world as an escape. There were countless other outlets I could have utilized, countless other ways I could have distracted myself. I could have gone running, collected quarters, hung out with friends, done something that was real or tangible. But instead, I chose to enter the virtual world with fewer restrictions, essentially none. Would you rather drive a Lamborghini or collect quarters? I personally would choose a Lambo. But sadly, my current pay isn't quite enough for me to afford one. But in the virtual world, in my world, that doesn't matter. I can make my decision and spend the day driving an electric green luxury vehicle across Europe. The only issue is that it isn't real. I'm an 18-year-old student. I can barely afford to go out to lunch. I do not have a Lamborghini. However, as the power of virtual reality continues to increase and advance, the line between the real and virtual world is beginning to blur. The virtual world, the world I control, continues to become more real and more lifelike each and every day. And it will continue to do so to the point in which you can see, hear, smell, feel, and even taste it. Imagine if you could fully submerge yourself in the world of your dreams. Over time, this will transform every aspect of life. And with the rate at which technology continues to advance, it is incredible to envision what 15, 10, or even just five years will bring. Think, reflect, and consider this. What would you do in a world of your dreams without any limits? And just how much would you give up for it? Because to be honest with all of you, I have yet to decide as well.